What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Dirty Water Red Sox podcast, episode three. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where's Where's the rest of everybody? Where's everybody? Oh, that's right. It's these guys. And oh, my goodness. Wait a minute. We're missing someone. We're missing someone. Why are we missing someone? Oh, wait a minute. What is this? Uh oh. What is this? Oh, my God. With the sweep. I didn't even know we were recording. Sorry about that, guys. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the Dirty Water Red Sox podcast. <laughs> my boss Sports and Grand Stand Productions. My name is Rob England. As always, with my co-host, Italy Jet, my good friend Noah, and my good friend Dev. How are we doing after that sweep? Sorry, I had to do some spring cleaning in the household, hey. you know? Gotta, gotta <laughs> clean up a bit. Hey, if an Italian doesn't have any spring cleaning late at night, then I, I you're not Italian. You're good. Not at all. So. I'm do we're doing great. We won against the Yankees because I hate them. Mm. So <laughs> it's all good and well. Devin, how you doing, my friend? Dude, I'm doing great, man. Th th this sweep was very surprising. I love it. You know, it it's always great to see the Yankees downfall. And, you know, just to do it in the Bronx is even way, way much sweeper. It's very much sweeper indeed. The Red Sox sweeping the Yankees is beautiful. How are we feeling, Noah? Sweeping the New York Yankees, who have been very bad this year. I'll be honest with you. I probably – I couldn't care less that we're out of a playoff spot right now. And that's probably a crazy thing to say because, you know, I really want to be in the playoffs. But – they just swept the Yankees. They're eight and one against the Yankees. I think for today you could kind of forget about the fact that they're out of a playoff spot because you saw everything post them. The vibes in the, with the Red Sox right now—they're just immaculate right now. The team's feeling it. The team's in good spirits, and I think it's going to just nothing but prepare them, give them good hopes, and just three and a half games out of a playoff race, which we'll talk about. But they're there and they're fighting. They are fighting indeed. The Yankees and the Red—the Yankees, sure as hell, aren't eight straight losses for the New York Yankees. The downfall of the New York Yankees is here, and I am here for it. Italy, Jen, how are we feeling about the sweep in New York? I know we are all very happy, especially with that shirt. I can tell you're happy. I work with so many people from New York, and even though we only have one thing in common, the my bucket list of things that I hate is the Yankees. That's one of them, so I'm happy. I'm happy for the downfall, and they can just continue sucking. I'm, I'm okay with it. Just let it keep going. Let it keep going. I don't think it feels any sweeter just to watch your rivals just have a, like a trash season. For me, just seeing them downfall, and especially all the Yankee fans in my comments on my TikToks and everything I post, it's just good to see them finally getting a taste of their own medicine. Uh, the Red Sox this year are 7-1 and one or 8-1 and against the New York Yankees this year. The New York Yankees just haven't been able to handle us. I mean, we scored eight runs in the first two games. This third game... Little shaky with the bullpen for the Red Sox, but I mean, we fought out. Justin Turner is a beast. Love Justin Turner. He has been carrying this team on his back. Now, with that happening and the happening of the sweep, we have to talk about the playoff situation for the Red Sox. Like Noah said, we're not in a wild card spot, but there is a race for the wild card right now, and the Red Sox have a chance to do it as they enter Houston. What a chance. If they do sweep the struggling Astros, they have a chance to reclaim a wild card spot. I'm going to go around the table and I'm going to ask everybody, how are we feeling about obviously the series sweep? We are already feeling good. But how are we feeling about our playoff chances now after the series sweep? I'm going to start with you, Devin. We're going to go around the table. How are you feeling about this Astros series and how you feel about the Red Sox chances with the wild card right now with this wild card race with Toronto, Houston, Seattle, and the Red Sox sneaking in? Well, you know, ever since we started this, man, I said this Boston team is a freaking wagon. And I really think that if we possibly do sweep the trash can Astros, I think that we could have a huge possibility to, you know, make a playoff spot. You know, I was down the dumps, you know, last weekend because, you know, we, we beat some, you know, bad teams. We lost to some bad teams. But I really think that this team is going to wake up. You know, Yoshida's going to have some great games. I feel like... uh Trevor Story, I feel like he can go four for five in, you know, this series against, like, you know, the Astros. If he can wake up and have some RBIs and, you know, be an MVP and, you know, wake up, make some nice plays, you know, hit some grand slams, three-run shots, I, and and this pitching, you know, with Winkowski and, you know, how, and, you know, Whitlock, hopefully they can get their, you know, stuff together. This team could actually surprise a lot of teams. Because, you know, we got the Astros, we got the Dodgers coming up, we got the Astros again. So I think that possibly by this weekend, we could see 
the Red Sox in a wild card spot because I think I love this team. You know, many people had doubts about this team, like, you know, being in last place. But look at the Yankees. They're in last place. They're not even probably in a, in a wild card spot. But I think that this team, the Boston Red Sox, will make a wild card spot. And if we do sweep the Astros, I think we take over that spot very, very soon. Love this team, and I think we make it happen in the next couple of days. I'm definitely feeling happy about this team, too, because last year, if we were in this situation right now, there would be no confidence in the 2022 Red Sox, for sure. Italy Jet, how are we feeling about this upcoming series against Houston in this wild card race right now? Are we excited for some playoff baseball at Fenway? I'm hoping. I'm hoping. It's it's always the hope that kills. But in the United States, it's the hope that just keeps going and going and going until it falls down. But this time, I really have this feeling in my gut. It's not acid reflux. I have this feeling in my gut that this is going to be a good week for us. I Just like Noah said last week, right? We always struggle against bad teams like the Nationals. We play against teams that matter and that are good. I think this is our chance to. You got the Astros coming up. You got the Dodgers coming up. We always play against good teams really well. And I think this is the week to make a difference and to make a stance on your division, to even bring a message in there. Yes, I do have faith. You got to believe in Boston, as they always say. I'm going to share my thoughts in a second, but no, let's hear your thoughts on this series coming up against Houston. How are you feeling about this wild card situation right now? It's hard for the vibes not to be great right now, right? They just swept the Yankees. They just buried the Yankees. They basically just unofficially ended the Yankee season. So I think that means I deserve to steal a quote from their manager, Aaron Boone. The Red Sox playoff hopes are right in front of them. It's right in front of us. We're three and a half games behind the Houston Astros with the four-game set coming up. So as Rob said, I believe it was, if Boston sweep Houston in this upcoming series, they're in a playoff spot. There's no two ways about it. Boston is in a playoff spot with the sweep of the Houston Astros. That's definitely something we should be looking at. But again, I think Boston can't underestimate Houston because obviously if they lose this series to Houston, obviously they got three against the Dodgers and three more against Houston coming up. So this isn't their last chance. But personally, I think they need to play like it is their last chance. You can't rely on next games. I don't even know what I just said there. Apologies for that. But – they can't, they can't underestimate Houston in this series. They can't be like, oh, we, we can't play well here. We got three more against them. They got to take advantage of Houston here. It's a four-game set. It's a big four-game set to get themselves in a playoff spot by September 1st. Nobody thought they'd be here. I personally didn't think they'd be in this position. Alas, here we are, August 20th. A sweep of the Astros puts them in the playoffs. It's a big series coming up against Houston. And as we go into Houston, the Red Sox, there's something about playing at Minute Maid Park that brings joy to me. And that brings yes. back to 2018 and 2021. Yes, I know in 2021 the Red Sox didn't win that series. Laz Diaz, it's all your fault. And Boston fans hate Laz Diaz for a big reason. Um, but no, I bet that obviously we're not going to talk about that. We're going to put that in the past, in the past, in the past. The Red Sox currently have a chance to make the playoffs this year. And to think from last season how this team was structured, you wouldn't think that the 2023 Red Sox. A lot of people were saying that the Red Sox were going to be in last place again. And the AL East has been strong all year, but. Right now, a lot of the AL East teams and a lot of the teams in the wild card, besides the Mariners, because the Mariners have been hot since the All-Star break, are struggling right now. Houston's not hasn't been the hottest. They've been inconsistent. The Blue Jays have been inconsistent as well, losing a lot of games. But, I mean, against Cincinnati, I mean, that sucked that they couldn't. The Reds couldn't win that game yesterday because that would have helped the Red Sox chances gain at least a game. But now entering Houston, a sweep would get us in a wild card spot. And I feel like going down south, going to Houston, the ball's going to fly a little bit more, especially with it being the Texas weather. And I think the Red Sox bats are going to wake up. If they woke up in New York. I think they're going to wake up in Houston, too. I mean, I'm just praying to God we don't see Justin Verlander this series because that's the last we thing do. we want to see right now. Oh, boy. We're in, yeah, we're, in for, we're in for a treat. I know we got Chris Sale coming up. Tanner Houck's going to make his season debut, I believe, tomorrow. So that should be good. Or not season debut. Sorry, his return from the injured list, I should say. My bad. He's coming back from the injured list tomorrow, so it'll be fun to see Tanner Houck and get Chris Sale in that game, too. And I think it's just hard. It's going to be a hard push for the Red Sox to make the playoffs, but if there's any team that can do it, it's the comeback kids in the Boston Red Sox. So I feel like there's hope, and especially coming down the line in a little bit, we're going to play the Astros again at home. So there's yes. chance we, if we win this series or sweep the series against Houston, have a good series against L.A. at home, there's a fair chance when they come to us, we have a chance of taking an advantage in the wild card. 
So that's where I'm going to lean into our next segment here. The path to the playoffs for the Boston Red Sox. Like I said, they're playing Houston. They have to pray for a downfall, maybe a Toronto, maybe a Seattle. They're going to fight for that last wild card spot, and the Boston Red Sox need to play good baseball. I'm going to start with you, Noah. What do you think is the key success for the Red Sox to get their path to the playoffs perfect and get them sneaking into October by the end of the year? Yes, yeah, so obviously I was talking to you guys to this uh, about this before stream. Right now, I think Tampa Bay is going to get in. There's a lot going on with Tampa Bay. They lo- obviously, they lost Wander Franco for, for now, obviously. Um, Shane McClanahan is done for the year and probably next year, too. <laughs> they're without Jeffrey Springs. They're without Drew Rasmussen. So they're down arms. And Tyler Glass now is struggling, too. Todd Bradley has been up and down the minors. So they're short on pitching. They have former Red Sox Zach Littell, who was awful two games for us on a relief this year, starting games and going five or six innings. So Tampa Bay is really short on pitching. So, But with all that being said, they're hot start. I think they will get into a playoff spot. Ultimately, I think that means there's two wild card spots up for grabs with four teams fighting for them. Houston, Seattle, Toronto, Boston. I, I all, at one point I was saying I think Houston's too experienced, too well coached, too too well managed to get in to miss the playoffs. My opinion on that is kind of changing because of how well the Mariners have been playing. I don't see a world right now where the Seattle Mariners miss the playoffs. I personally don't. I think Toronto, not Toronto. I think the Rays are going to get in, and I think the Mariners are going to get in. That leaves Boston, Houston, Toronto, one spot, and again. It all comes down to the series right here. Four games against Houston, three and a half out. If Boston want this spot, they got to make a statement this week. I'm not saying there's maybe not a chance they could catch the Rays or maybe not a chance they could even catch uh, Seattle. But personally, I think their best and most realistic path to the playoffs is beating Houston, beating up on Houston in these seven games that they have against them. Especially beating up on Houston, a team that you need to beat up on, especially when you're chasing that last wildcard spot, you need to play good baseball down the stretch. August is the most important stretch of baseball. August and September, the biggest and most important games you need to play down the stretch during the season. Italy Jet, how are we feeling? Do you think the Red Sox sneak into the playoffs? And if they do, how do you think, what do you think their biggest path and what they need to do to get into this playoff spot? If we don't play well against the Astros this week, I am not all hope is gone for me. I think if we play well against the Dodgers and then play against them, uh, play against the Astros after that, and then continue with the Royals, then I think we still have a chance that people can still lose if they could continue to lose in our division and even out of the division. For me, I agree with Noah. I think the Astros, it's inevitable. I think the Astros in Seattle are going to be there. I don't know about the Blue Jays. Like, I, Blue Jays always, when it comes to August and September, they are known for crashing and burning. That's just what they're known for. Yeah. And, and now with the Rays, it's kind of the same thing. They get in, but they don't come. But when they go to that first series, they, they, they always get eliminated. Boston is actually known for getting further, like Houston and like, um, and uh, like the Yankees used to be, but now I'm not even worried about that. I am mostly worried about the Astros and Mariners because I think we're hot right now. We're getting everybody back. Story, Hauk, Sale, everybody's come back. We got young guys coming off the bench. You got Turner playing first base. Turner has been saving us. And if he continues to save us, everyone can just go up to his level. Then I think we're going to be just fine. Not hope is lost after this week, but it's the following week that I am worried about. Oh, indeed. The next this week, I think if they're playing a hot hand right now, and the Red Sox are scoring runs, that's the one thing you got to do is you just got to ride the hot hand. Dev, how are we feeling about this playoff push right now? What do you think is this thing that the Red Sox need to do in order to get into the playoff? And what do you who do you feel is the key player that needs to click in order for this team to turn things around and sneak into that wild card spot? You know, I think this Red Sox team is very like you know surprising, and I think we need to just sprinkle that magic like pixie dust on some players that need to like you know. Do, do a lot better, like Pablo Reyes, uh, you know, I think Rafael Devers could be the key player that, you know, boosts, you know, everyone up in there. Trish and Koss is for sure. I feel like, you know, our Lord and Savior, JT, Justin Turner, he's going to turn things around and definitely, you know, hit some home runs, hit some key shots for, you know, the Red Sox in order to make a playoff push. I feel like, you know, hopefully our starting pitcher with Bayo, Sale, you know, Paxton could – wake us up a little bit more this series because we have, you know, them them going this week. So I feel like that if, you know, Devers and Turner can just, you know, boost up everyone's mentality a little bit and have that, you know, David Ortiz game, like three yelling at everyone in the dugout and be like, you know, 
We need to wake up. We need to score runs. We need to be the mentality that we were back in 04, you know, 18, 14 and whatnot. You know, we need to boost up that mentality. We need to learn to be that team to be like, you know what? That it feels like just like the Angels in the outfield moment or um where where the guys like, you know what? We won a game. And if we win two, you know what? That's called a winning streak. So, you know what? We need to have that same mentality, right? As, uh, you know, Cleveland Indians been in that movie said, you know, we need to keep up this winning streak going. We need to keep that mentality same. We need to fight for our right boss in the party right now. We need to live. We need to live strong. We need to do the best that we got and live every moment like this is game 163 and we are fighting for our lives right now. We need that same mentality. We need that same energy in the locker room for the Red Sox to be like, hey, we can actually do this. If we can sweep the Astros, man, just like we've all been saying, we can be right there. We're very close. I think the team can do it. You know, key players that can do it, definitely Devers, Casas, and definitely Justin Turner. I'm very excited to see what this team can do in the next couple of weeks. Like you always say, Dev, this team is a wagon. And honestly, I feel like the Boston Red Sox have been playing a lot better baseball in August than they have in previous years. I had a note on my phone because me and my friend got in like a, a, a you know, a civil debate. But in the last five years, the Boston Red Sox haven't played above 500 baseball in August. It's, it's 2019 and 2019 they played exactly at 500, 15 and 15. 2020 due to the shortened season, 3 and 8. 11 and 15 in August of 21, and then the August of 22, 12 and 16. Right now, I don't know the current record in August, but I know that they're playing inconsistent baseball. Against the Washington Nationals, you had to win that series personally, but I mean, sweeping the Yankees makes everything okay, but we can't sweep that under the rug. Also, speaking about that new sweep, I keep saying sweep because, you know, it's a, it's nice, but how about Luis Urias as well hitting two grand slams this week? I think there's some key players that need to be in this team for the Boston Red Sox, and one of them definitely Luis Urias has been a great acquisition. Definitely glad we didn't get Paul DeYoung because he's already DFA by the Blue Jays now that yes. Obi headed back. So that, didn't yeah, that was uh, that, that experiment was kind of short lived there in uh, in Toronto. Oh. Blue Jays legend Paul DeYoung, but no, I feel like the Red Sox <laughs> after the playoffs it definitely needs to be. Beat the Astros. That needs to be all hands on deck. Like Dev said, play every game like it's game 163. Play every game like you're going home because this, a wild card spot, as you just get a wild card spot, anything can happen. We've seen it in 2021 with the Red Sox. They made it all the way two games away from winning a World Series after winning the wild card game against the Yankees. We've seen it in 2019. The Nationals had like a terrible start to the season and they snuck into the wild card spot and they won the whole fucking World Series. I'm telling you right now, if you have momentum, Anything is possible. The Red Sox just need to have players click. Justin Turner, he's been a, an amazing veteran in the clubhouse, and he's been amazing on the field. What production he's been great. Hitting over 320 plus homers. He's a beast. Rafael Devers in a quote-unquote down year, having almost an 870 OPS, almost 30 bombs. That's a down year. I'll take that every single year. I'm telling you right now, if the pitching can be right, the bullpen struggled a little bit in that series in Washington, and uh, – and by bullpen, I mean Garrett Whitlock. He's been kind of shaky. I don't know what's going on with him, and I hope everything's okay because that's the last thing we need is someone to be injured. But everyone else, Kenley. Kenley looked a little shaky in the first part of this save, but he ended up locking it down towards the end. I feel like it all starts with your pitching. If your lineup can consistently hit, I think this your pitching can hold them down to two, three runs. Your starters, at least two runs. Speaking of until starters, we'll get into the state of the rotation in a second. But if your starters are healthy and pitching good, and especially if your bullpen clicks and your lineup clicks, the Red Sox can get hot. We've seen them get hot before. Speaking about pitching, as I wanted to say, the state of the rotation, the Boston Red Sox finally have a healthy rotation for the first time all season. This is the first time, and I'm not even going to include Corey Kluber or Nick Pavetta because Nick Pavetta's just been great in the bullpen. And obviously, I, he's a starter right now for the Red Sox. He's been a spot starter recently. But um, we don't care about Corey Kluber. No offense, Corey Kluber, but you're not needed right now. The focus and the future right. rotation – is here and i just want to hear you guys thoughts about the state of the rotation now that we have a fully healthy rotation do we think this boosts i know this boosts energy for the red sox and their fans but how are we feeling about this healthy rotation and who do you think has, is going to be to click out of these starters do you think this is going to be a good stretch of games for the red sox i'm going to start with you Noah, about because i know you're big on their pitching right now how are you feeling about this healthy rotation for the first time i believe in over a year and a half for the red sox 
Yeah, absolutely. But before we do this, I want to spend 10 seconds, and I just want to say one more thing about the path to the playoffs, and it's just going to back up what Italy just said. Two things. I agree. I don't think a, a bad series here to Houston kind of kills all momentum. I would say a split at worst. And what my opinion on the Tampa Bay Rays right now, the Rays feel like a team that's out of gas, and they're just kind of sputtering to the finish line right now. That's how the Rays kind of feel to me. But state of the rotation, they're healthy. I don't think, to my knowledge, at least, I don't think Chris Sale and James Paxton have pitched in the same rotation yet since James Paxton's been in Boston. Obviously, Paxton didn't pitch for the Red Sox last year. You know, was rehabbing from Tommy John, hurt himself while rehabbing from Tommy John, didn't pitch for the team at all last year. Uh, obviously, Chris Sale pitched last year, but then he fell off his bike. Uh, stuff happens, I guess. Um, but the rotation is healthy. It's it's going to be a rotation in no order of Sale, Paxton, Bayo, Hauk. I guess Hauk's going to start. And then I guess Nick Pavetta, I, I think he's probably... I know, Carter Crawford. Carter Crawford. Apologies. How, how can I forget Carter Crawford? I don't know him. Ooh, sorry about that. Had a no-hitter through five innings the other night. Um, but they're healthy. And I think in order to... And this has been kind of the thought the whole time. In order for the Red Sox to have a chance to make a run down the stretch, they were going to need a fully healthy pitching rotation. And that's what they have now. Uh, and they've got options. Obviously, you really don't want to have to use Garrett Whitlock as a starter anymore. <laughs> really don't want to have to use Nick Pavetta as a starter if you don't need to. So ideally, you keep the five you've got right now healthy. Ideally, personally, I'm not a big even start Tanner Hout guy, but I think he's a bigger starter, but not bigger. I think he's a better starting pitcher option than Garrett Whitlock is to get you five, maybe six innings. But ultimately, the, the fact of the matter is that the Red Sox, to have a chance down the stretch, they're going to need a fully healthy rotation, and that's what they have right now. A fully healthy rotation is music to my ears, and that is true. I don't think we've ever seen Pax and Sale pitch in the same rotation, so it'll be nice to see two good left-handed pitchers in this rotation for the Red Sox. It'll be Jet, how are we feeling about a healthy rotation for the Boston Red Sox? And out of all the five starters we have right now, who do you think is the pick-to-click? And I think Bayo is the pick-to-click for me, but I want to hear your opinion. Who do you think is the pick-to-click coming down the stretch for this rotation? You know, timing is always everything, right? Timing is everything. If we were talking earlier this year that we would be in this position with all the injuries we've had to the pitching, we would all be on the same page. Now, we're not on the same page because of all the unhealthiness. And now that we're healthy, we're going to see more now. We're going to see it all come together. This is what we've been waiting for as a Red Sox nation to have everyone healthy at the same time. We had a glimpse of it about a month ago, and look what that happened. More injuries. Now that everyone's fully healthy, I am looking at how can I'm looking at Bale. I'm looking at Bale and I'm looking at Hauk. I want them both to succeed, whether they're going to they're be in the bullpen or starting pitching, but they're going to be my it too because Bale, he has been our best pitcher, best starting pitcher all season. You can't argue that. Everyone could probably argue maybe Sale when he's healthy, right? Hauk, I, I love Hauk. St. Louis boy, he's my man. I'm always going to back him up, but I think he's better starting pitcher than a reliever. For me, his stuff, when he – he always, in the first two innings, he's always all um, in his head, right? But once he gets to that third and fourth inning, he comes back a stronger, stronger every single time. I think if we can keep that a little bit going with him and put him in the right area in the right time, then I think we're going to be okay. But those are my two guys. And this is this is starting to become a young guy team. There's not a lot of old guys here anymore. The young guys have to step up in the bullpen to get us over that hump. They do need to step up, and the bullpen has been stepping up all season compared to 2022, where they had the 26th worst ERA and the 22nd worst bullpen in Major League Baseball, going to a top six bullpen in Major League Baseball and ERA wise. It's great to see. Dev, how are we feeling about this? How do you feel about this healthy rotation? Who's your favorite starter right now, and who, who is your pick to click in this rotation now that it's fully healthy? Well, I mean, you have to think about situations like this, and some of these pitchers are giving me some old Red Sox legend, you know, vibes. Like, you know, Chris Sale, he's kind of giving me a John Lester kind of, you know, a vibe, you know, being on the Red Sox for a long while, you know, winning a couple of worlds here. You know, Brian Bale, he could be the next Pedro Martinez. You know, uh, Paxson, he could give you a little bit of a Ryan Dempster kind of a vibe. You know, Nick Pavetta being a little bit fiery, you know, being a little bit like a, kind of pissed off kind of kind of guy giving you like a John Lackey kind of a vibe when he used to play for the Boston Red Sox, a la, you know, Anaheim Angel. And, you know, uh, Cutter Crawford, 
he's kind of giving me like a Jake PV kind of a vibe, you know. So if you get all those pitchers together and combine it, you got yourself a playoff, you know, World Series team right there. So the player that really needs to kick, I feel like, is Chris Hill. We can get the Chris Hill that we about got back in 2018 when we won the World Series back, you know, in LA. If we can just get that Chris Sale back, you know, fiery striking people out, you know, getting pumped up and whatnot. If we could get Nick Vetta like we got, you know, from the 2021 when we lost to Houston Astros, but, you know, he was pitching dominance up against the, you know, Tampa Bay Rays and whatnot, you know, 14, you know, he was pitching like what, six, maybe uh, five innings or whatnot, you know, striking out people left and right. If we could get that Nick Pavetta back, that would be huge for the Red Sox to make a huge push for the wild card. So, if the, you know, I'm happy that we have a healthy pitching road chasing. So, you know, with these guys being healthy and being available and hopefully giving up maybe one to two runs per game, this Red Sox team could be a wagon for sure. I cannot stress this enough, and I agree. This team could be a wagon. Pitching is the most important thing in Major League Baseball besides the offense. You can't have a game of baseball without pitchers. And having a healthy rotation for the first time this year makes a lot of Red Sox fans, including myself, very at ease, knowing that we don't have to worry about, oh, is Brendan Bernardino going to come out here and open the game? Is it going to be John Schreiber opening the game? It's good to have a set starter for the first time in a long time. I think the Red Sox rotation is good. Chris Sale, I think, if he can stay healthy, he can pitch a good amount of innings. He's not going to be the old Chris Sale, like lights out Chris Sale like he was in Chicago. But I'll take a four or five innings, two hard runs, three hard runs to start if that keeps us in a game. Brian Bayo's is looking like prime Pedro Martinez right now. That game against New York, he gave up one run in six, seven innings. He pitched amazing. And his windup, they, they compared it on Apple TV to Pedro Martinez. And I found it funny because you look at old, old videos of Pedro, and it's like they're, they're wind up the same, the arm slot's the same. He's been working with Pedro in the offseason, but he's been amazing. Great story. Brian Bale, the ace of the future for the Boston Red Sox. James Paxton, even though he has been looking shaky in his past couple starts, I still feel like he's a reliable starter for the Red Sox. And like I like you said about Cutter Crawford, I think Cutter Crawford's a good guy to have at that fit starter. He's been pitching so good recently and stretching games where he's just been lights out. Cutter Crawford's been a big surprise for me, and I think he is a pick to click for the Red Sox staff. If you can have him in your back end and he can give good innings, especially with the how a lot of these pitchers are still coming back from injury. James Paxton's been, I mean, I think his knee's fine right now, but he's been kind of shaky. They've been having the, he's been getting up a lot of runs. He's been getting hit hard. That last start, he did get hit very hard. It just seems like if your bullpen's worked out, you need one or two guys who go deep in the games to save your bullpen. Cutter Crawford's been going deep, like six, seven innings each start. So he's been going deep in the game, saving that Red Sox bullpen. And I think having a healthy rotation, you can't go wrong with having a healthy rotation, especially going down the stretch. Let's say someone does go down, at least now you have Nick Pavetta, Garrett Whitlock, who could step in because now they're in the rotation. I think another thing, too, mentioning about Nick Pavetta in that 2021 playoffs, I think Garrett Whitlock, if we do get into the playoffs, he might give me a Nate Evaldi 2021 vibe. A starting pitcher, turn back reliever who can get big outs in big situations and can go deep because he has the stamina for it. I like that. And I like that. It's a good story. Speaking of story, this is um this is gonna be a story time with Noah Doherty. Um, we're gonna let him go first. He's gonna take this segment away, and we'll we'll give our thoughts a little bit too. But he hasn't been feeling the best on Trevor's story. But let's hear your thoughts, Noah. How are you feeling about Trevor's story right now? All right, boys. All right, first off, you guys can bring yourselves back to the screen. This doesn't need to be a this doesn't need to be a full me thing. You guys nope, nope, I'm in control. Me. It's all you right now. You <laughs> right. do your thing. All right, all right, all right. Thank, you, chat. Thank you for that. All right, so by popular demand, I'm joking, uh, a couple of the guys voted to out, out, kind of outlaw me from this segment. Uh, no, he's not but, joking. He, he's not joking. He's not. <laughs> he's not right I'm not joking. He's not all. joking. This is, a, this is a thing. Yes, this is a thing. But let's get to the chase. Trevor Story is a horrible baseball player. Like that. Let's get that out of the way. Right? Uh, right. People people will say, cut him some slack. He just came back from injury. First off, he was a putrid bat last year. He hit 238, 16 home runs, 66 RBIs. And if you see me looking somewhere else, I'm looking at baseball reference because only a sicko would know these numbers off the top of their head. But he was putrid last year. He was horrible last year. And some people will say, uh, gee, uh, Italy Jet, uh, apologies, but do I have permission to share my screen in a little bit to show, to show one of the pitches that he swung at earlier? Do I have permission to do I, that? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Thank you, um, <laughs> this is great. I love this. Um, yeah, it's like I, I bet you podcast. do. It's like my own little podcast. Uh, yeah. This year, no he's, played in nine games. he's played in nine games. He's done nothing but suck. He's hit 200, 
zero RBIs. He has zero RBIs in nine games played. He doesn't have an RBI. Some of the events he's been putting up have been not even competitive whatsoever. He's hitting 200. He's not walking, and when he walks, they're on four pitches because it's some pitcher that really doesn't know who's at the plate, apparently, that he'll chase a pitch that hits the plate. Sorry. Um, <laughs> this is three serious. stolen bases. He's he's playing elite defense. I'll give him that. Pablo Reyes has been a better base runner than him. What, what does Trevor Story do better than Pablo Reyes? I'm, I'm going to keep talking the way I pull up one of the one of the pitches that he swung at from earlier, but what is what is there to like about this guy right now? People, people will like what they see in this guy, and he's being hyped up. Oh, Trevor Story, he's coming back. He'll surely save the Red Sox season. Meanwhile, I think he has worse plate discipline than Javier Baez. Like, oh, I, I really God. God. Damn. Yeah. Oh, I, if, Trevor oh. Story sees this, if Trevor Story sees this, uh, Trevor Story, if you see this video, I challenge you over the next week, please put up a competitive at-bat. Have a competitive at-bat up there. Give me something up there. <laughs> I, still, I still think you need to show the pitch that he swung at. Yeah, you need to I do will. that. I, I'm pulling yeah, it up it. because I did it. Yeah, I did it. I'm pulling it up. Hold on, guys. Hold on. Hang with me. Oh hang with me, guys. God. Hang with me. Hang with me. Hang with me. He's, <laughs> he's, like really he's been watching. Hopefully, no technical, hopefully no technical difficulties here. But hopefully, you, this, you all got to let me know almost immediately if you see this. Uh, is this really happening right now? Okay. Can you see this? All right, it's loading right now. Yeah, yeah, we can see it. Here we go. Okay, you all can right. see zoom this. in, zoom in, zoom in. There you go. Uh, we're, we're, we'll zoom in all the way. There we go. Right. Okay. <laughs> Trevor Story got rung up on pitch six here, which prompt uh, pitch four, by the way, also horrible. Pitch six called strike. We're going to cover. Don't look at pitch five yet. I'll get to that. Right. Pitch six. Trevor Story got rung up on strike three. Alex Cora got thrown out because of it. I'm all for sticking up for your players, but when you look at pitch five, Trevor Story swung. And that pitch, that's ball four, not even I, – I, is that 10 feet off the plate maybe? It's not even close to the zone. It's a, it's a sleeper. It's not, at no point a strike at all to end up at that place. He swings at it. I understand that pitch four and pitch six are horrible, right? Don't defend him after swinging at pitch five. You can't defend him. He had elbow surgery. He's not blind. He can see the baseball. That's the problem here. So I'll challenge Trevor Story over the next week. Adam Duvall is lucky because usually he's the one catching strays here. Usually it's Adam Duvall. <laughs> Today it's Trevor Story. Trevor Story, I challenge you over the next week. Give me a competitive at bat, and I promise you I'll, I'll have an own segment next week. Five minutes apologizing to Trevor Story. I want to oh hear that. I'm not going to lie. Nice. Oh, Listen, I got a signed story jersey if you want it. Gino sent it to me if you want it. If it goes five, I'm good, five, Rob. Thanks, send it to you. Thanks, Rob. Oh <laughs> okay, listen, listen, listen. I'm going to intervene here. And we're going to put this for me right here. Noah, what the hell has any every major league baseball player has swung at that fifth pitch? Everyone. It's not just story. What are you doing? He's coming back from elbow surgery. He's gonna take time, and he's one of our he's best not players. He's blind. I he didn't you are blind. blind. You he didn't are blind. Have eye That's what it is. He could see the baseball. He's not blind. He had he elbow surgery. Be You're the blind. only blind person. He might be blind. Oh, God. Anyway, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Just that was some Javier. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. That that probably is a pitch that only Javier Baez swings at. So I can kind of agree to that. Yeah, but, but everybody oh, has. No, no. Everybody has done that at least once or twice, or maybe in their life. Come on. I say one thing about Trevor Story is he's good with the glove, but that bat needs to figure it out. Because I, what I even said it before, he started the season 0 for 8 with six strikeouts. Like that's that's pretty bad. I know he's coming back. But I love Trevor Story. I want him to be okay. It'll but be fine. No, at least it's not a Royo. At least it's not a Royo. Is... Mm. Last year, Trevor Story struck out 122 times in 94 games. That is a 200 strikeout pace. Oh boy! Jeez. Can you name a player in Major League Baseball other than Joey Gallo that is striking out 200 times in a season? Mark Bellhorn. That's probably, <laughs> probably Mark Bellhorn, yeah. Trot Nixon, Trot Nixon. <laughs> Carlos Stanton. 
I'm done. Nope, I'm nope, done. nope, nope, nope. How about this? Pablo Sandoval. Oh, yeah, he's God. oh yeah. God, yes. <laughs> what is this episode? What is this episode? We're reminiscing on the old times. John Lackey, Jake Peavy, John Lester, <laughs> Pablo Sandoval. It's like a flashback episode. We didn't even know. Right. That. We're All right. For sure. Oh my God. All right. Closing thoughts. Rob, start with you. Well, first things first, everybody. I think this season is going to be, it's going to end in a miracle for the Red Sox. I think we're going to see a parade down on plants down street oh, going yeah. down. I really think it could happen if we can figure it out and click. This team can get on a streak. I mean, we've seen it earlier in the year winning eight, nine games in a row. This team has. If they're hot and they're clicking, they're going to be good. My closing thoughts, the Boston Red Sox are going to win two out of three in Houston. They're going to go back home against L.A. I'm going to shed tears when I see Mookie Betts on that field with Kike Hernandez, even though Kike Hernandez ain't compared to Mookie Betts. Mookie Betts got my heart. Kike, Kike. Got a loser. Got, got a little bit of love for him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, going to be, I'm going to be shedding tears when I see Mookie Betts and J.D. Martinez, but I do think this team has a chance if they can – Win a series yeah. against the Dodgers, win a series against Houston, come back home and play Houston too. There's a chance that this team can get hot. But those are my thoughts. I think the Red Sox play October baseball. All right, Noah, closing thoughts. So I'll, I'll stay away from Trevor Story because I think I've made my uh, point very clear. <laughs> but I, I've been saying it since mid-June, right? If the Red Sox sneak into the playoffs, it has the feel of a team that could do some damage. I know that was the 2018 motto. But the vibe around the Red Sox right now and the vibe around the Red Sox this year is the vibe of a team that could, you know, sneakily go on a run if they get into the playoffs. So, long story short, I'm not sure if they're going to get into the playoffs right now. We'll have a better idea of that when we talk next week. But right now, they're obviously out of a spot. But if they get in, watch out. All right, Devin, closing thoughts. Closing thoughts, man. I hope that the Red Sox do have a couple good wins the next next games. You know, if we could go nine, nine out of ten, ten games and win those, that would be nice. And just for Noah's sake, I hope that Trevor Story goes four for five every at bat. It's three home runs in one game, and you know, and we have a Noah apology by next Sunday. It would be nice. <laughs> I'm not kidding, by the way. If oh, Trevor I know Story, you're not kidding. Oh, we know. Trevor, we got that very loud and clear. <laughs> if Trevor Story apology. turns this, if Trevor Story turns this around, right? I will write an essay and read it live on podcast. Oh my God, you ain't doing that. I, I can't see you doing <laughs> any of that. I but, promise you, uh, I will. All right, I, I want, I need an email of this. That's what needs to Absolutely. happen. Absolutely. I'll put it in writing. <laughs> all right. All right, my closing thoughts is this team feels like, and I'm dead serious, it feels like the old St. Louis Cardinals when they won the World Series. It, when people are hot at the right time, they could do a lot of big things, especially when they are a wild card team. All the Cardinals, uh, when, when they won the World Series, they were – Two of the two out of three of them were wild card teams. Just get hot, get hot at the right time, healthy at the right time. If they don't, then someone else steps up. This feels different. I like where we're going with this. I love the acquisitions. I love the people that we DFA'd to make this team better. They are rallying around core right now. They love core for some reason. And that's what you need. Coaching is important. Coaching is very important. And you know what? If this is the coach, hey, man, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Be thankful we didn't get a chorus segment because Noah probably oh. went for 20 minutes. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. <laughs> I take, my, my point on but, core is very clear, but my point on core has always been if the clubhouse loves him, I like him. I agree with that. I agree with that. But, guys, that's my closing thoughts. This has been a great Dirty Water Red Sox podcast episode three. Please, please, if you don't mind, subscribe, like, and share, and comment to Grandstand Productions, the Dirty Water Red Sox podcast. We will be have another episode next week and Sunday, and then we're going to premiere it sometime during the following week. Guys, we love you, and uh, I think we all know what to do next. We love, love that, that dirty, dirty water. water. Oh, that was epic fail. Peace. <laughs> We'll be better next week.